Hello, so today we're going to be talking about AVR programming in C. This comes from Chapter 7 of the AVR Microcontroller and Embedded Systems Using Assembly and C Textbook by Mazidi, Naimi, and Naimi. And you can find this textbook at nicerline.com as well as places like Amazon. I refer you to the instruction set manual for the AVR microcontroller as well. And there is a C compiler document for AVR from Microchip. Um, or there's other documents from uh, Atmel um, previously on GCC and the AVR microcontrollers. So today we're going to be talking about programming languages with respect to microprocessors. And specifically, we're going to talk about programming in C for input-output programming. All right. When we talk about programming, we often talk about high-level languages, which offer very good performance. They're easy to develop and update for, and they're portable. And examples of these languages would be languages like C or C++, Java, Python, MATLAB, etc. There are also low-level programming languages like Assembler that are optimized um, for performance. They are uh, hard to maintain. They're hard to collaborate with. They're not really portable, um, but they do have their place. And then we also have machine-level uh, illustrations of programming where basically what we're doing is we're talking about the activation of circuits within microprocessors. We're talking about the individual ones and zeros that make certain circuits turn on and off. They're used when we're doing design of microprocessors, uh, in investigations for performance or hacking, things along those lines. And, um, and so when, when you're talking about microprocessor programming, generally you're working at the high level. Sometimes you get down to the low level, you'll add in assembler operations, things like that. And then sometimes when you get into the really deep details, you get into the machine level side of things. All right. When we're talking about microprocessor programming, we're typically talking about programming in C. This is the traditional high level language that's used. It's the de facto standard. It's especially uh, so in the embedded device space. C is similar to Java, MATLAB, and programming languages like that. When we're talking about 8-bit programming, we're typically talking about the C99 standard of C, um, although sometimes a little bit more advanced than that. Uh, when we get to, into the 32-bit and 64-bit processors, then we generally move from C99 into sort of post-internet or internet era C um, standards, including C11, C17, and the, well, we're in 2022, there's going to be another one released soon. So that's, that's typically what we're talking about. All modern processors support programming in C. In fact, there's a lot of assembler opcodes that have been developed for microprocessors in the past 20 years or so that have been done specifically to better optimize C performance. Finally, you will also see that, especially in the 32-bit and 64-bit space, the compiler sets, the IDEs, will support not only C, but C++. It's typically just a switch within the IDE preference settings. Uh, this is typically found in the 32-bit processors, but you will sometimes see it in the 8-bit processors as well, um, typically with AVR, but you don't see it in most of the other 8-bit processors. All right, let's talk about a simple C program now. Here we're going to take the sum of 1, 3, 5, etc., up to 13 and 15, add it together, the result should give you 64. This is what a program would look like in C. So you have a function called main. It takes nothing or void as an input. It has int, an integer, as an output. We open it with curly braces. We end it with curly braces. Um, and what we have here is a variable called sum. It's a positive integer, so unsigned int. And we set it to 0 initially. Then we have a for loop. And that for loop has an index called i, and it starts with a value of 1. You can see that in the parentheses right there. And it's allowed to go all the way up to and including 15. That's the second part of that for loop opening statement right there. And then it does so in increments of 2. So it will go 1, 3, 5, etc., all the way to 15. And every time it increments, it's going to take the, the variable called sum, and it will add the value of the index to it. So it'll take to go 0 first, then 1, then 1 plus 3, then uh, that's 4, then 4 plus 5, 
which is 9, etc., all the way up to when you get to a, a total sum of 64. Once that 64 is reached, it will uh, go to the next line, which is while 1, which is basically a locking loop. It will loop there forever. And you'll never actually re uh, reach the return 0 at the end or that final curly brace because that while loop will dominate. All right, if you're more familiar with languages like MATLAB, this is what the MATLAB equivalent would look like, where we have uh, the sum being set to zero initially, then you have a for loop um, defined by an index called my index in this case, um, and there's going to be um, a vector 1 through 15 in increments of 2, and then inside my sum is equal to my sum plus my index. All right, next up, here's another example. We're going to write an AVRC program to send the value 0xAA, so AA in hexadecimal, to port D. And it's important to note here that AA in binary is 10101010. So that's what we're actually sending to the, the port pins. We have an opening statement called include, in this case, xc.h. Depending on your compiler, then the library instead would be avrio.h. It really depends on your ID setup. We have the opening of the main function. Then inside of the main function's curly braces, what we see is the data direction register for port D is set to, in binary, only ones. So there's going to be eight ones in there, which translates into a hexadecimal value of 0xff. So what we're doing here is we're making all eight bits on port D to be outputs. That's what's going on. Then from there, we set the value of those outputs on port D to be 10101010, which in hexadecimal is 0xAA. So all the odd bits are going to be set high, and all the even bits will be set low. Once that happens, then we go into a locking while loop, and we loop there forever. And, and that's basically it. The return 0 never gets uh, achieved, and the curly brace at the very end doesn't get achieved either because we have an infinite while loop. All right, from there, here's another example. We're going to alternate outputs on port D uh, in a loop. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to, again, have an opening statement with our library. We open up the main function. We have an index uh, variable uh, called index, and we set it to zero initially. And because it's an unsigned char, that's an 8-bit variable uh, of positive type only. That's what that means right there. Then from there, we set our data direction register for port D to be FF in hexadecimal, which means that all of the bits will be outputs. Then we go into an infinite loop while one. And here, what we're going to do is every time we increment or cycle through the loop, um, then what we do is we engage a for loop internally. And that for loop will have, uh, in this case, it has an index uh, that goes from zero all the way up to nine. So it counts 10 times. And it increments by one each time it does. So zero for the index the first time, one for the index the second time, two for the index the third time, etc. Okay, all the way up until it hits 9, it finishes that loop, and then it restarts again from there. Um, so what happens here is that each time we create a new index, that index value, which initially is just zeros, then it's uh, seven zeros and a 1, then it's uh, 6 zeros and a 1, and then another 0, etc. as we go through. Every time we go through this for loop, the value on the pins at port D will change. Okay, this is the output that's going out. So if you have, say, eight LEDs connected to it, the pattern on those LEDs will change each time we go through this for loop. And then we go 10 times through the for loop, we cycle again because of the infinite while loop, and we start again from zero. Okay, so this will repeat itself 10 times, and then another 10 times, and then another 10 times infinitely. Here's another example right here. Write an AVR program to calculate the inputs from port B and port C, so these are the electrical inputs coming in on the pins, add those individual bits together, and send the result to port D. So we start with an opening line, uh, which is the include AVR IO.H. This is our input li or uh, our AVR library for input and outputs. You can use the catch-all XC.H in MPLABX. We have the opening of the main function, as we did before. Then we set the data direction for registers or for port B and port C to be zero, which means they're both going to be inputs. Okay, so all eight bits on port B and C will be set to zero or inputs. 
Then we're going to set the data direction for port D to outputs. So it's going to be 0xff, which is eight values of one in binary. From there, we go into an infinite loop. You can see that while one right there. And then every time we increment through the while loop, we will take the input from port B, the input from port C. We add those bits together, okay? And then we will take that addition and send it as a value to the bits that are found on port D, which means the pins attached to port D will reflect what the addition was converted into binary. And that is the third example. Thank mm -hmm. you.